Hey everybody, Philip and Danny here, founders of the Freedom Real Estate Group family of companies. And we'd like to welcome you to uh, another episode of our podcast. Which is Real Talk. And that's Real Talk for Real Estate Investors. One well, nicely done. <laughs> and this is episode number 42. 42. Remember, you, you used to do that, I, by the way. 42. 42. For those of you actually looking at the video and not driving in your car, yeah. we're making <laughs> funny symbols. Quattro dos. Um, <laughs> uh, in this episode, actually, um, uh, this one is called uh, Generational Wealth and Real Estate Investing for Future Generations. And I want to show you something, actually, real quick. Um, so people that buy our, our turnkey, which is a turnkey property, which is our we, what we call our rice bowl. That's our that's our bread and butter, uh, our turnkey properties. But well, when you buy one of our turnkey properties, you get this cool shirt that says "I'm planning for three generations" instead of planning for a Saturday night hashtag passive income. Um, and no, well, the shirts are one size fits all. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so uh, so that's our plan for 2022: buy a house, get a shirt. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, I, I thought that was a great idea. This is a great, uh, great thought, a uh, great line, a uh, great, uh, uh, I mean, I, I didn't think of this. this is, this is awesome. Yes. Because that's what it's about is, is planning for the future generations. That's right. You know what I love uh, <coughs> about owning six companies and having all these incredible team members? Is that happening without not knowing anything about yes, it? Yes, yeah. it's brilliant. I mean, we did know about it when it was being created, but, you know, you I just didn't. forget. Oh, okay, you were left out of the loop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's just amazing. Our team is so freaking amazing. I'm so yeah. proud of uh, everybody and everything. So yeah. that was totally off topic. Um, but that's what these are about. These but, podcasts are just... Us we're and we don't drink chatting. coffee, but I should have my big soda here right now. Um, just we're just chatting. Yeah, you know, okay. I already I already had my coffee. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm going to start uh, this, and and then uh, we'll we'll really dive in. So right. this is an important topic for us. It's something that we talk about a lot in our um, Freedom Through Passive Income uh, mm-hmm. podcast series. It's a 365 day series, mm-hmm. and we have to- topics about tax free wealth, generational. Um, uh, generational wealth. Um, gosh, I can't even remember. I just did a post about it just the other day. I was like, if you want to know this, 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 yeah, yeah. and we, it just exploded. And they're just like, yes, we want to know about these things. Um, high rates of returns, mm-hmm. passive income, um, lots of stuff. But uh, generational wealth is a very, very hot topic mm-hmm. um, because so many times we're talk- we've talked about this before um, on the other podcast about the Social Security Administration talking about the 100 people that they studied. This was done a long time ago right. and how 92% of them, by the time they reach retirement, are broke mm-hmm. and they're they're living with family or they're working because they have to mm-hmm. not because they want to and so we are trying to change the game yep. um, as much as we can by educating people so i say all that because we had prepared this podcast in for the other series yes and then caitlin on our marketing team she says hey will you guys do a topic about this and i'm like whoa that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sure can. <laughs> so we had already, you know, um, we actually already recorded the other one um, because those are like eight minutes less. And we went, <laughs> okay, yeah, done. That's, that's one time we're actually on YouTube. You can click on the video uh, and slow it down. Because um, <laughs> we're going so fast. I mean, I said maybe seven words for those eight minutes and I was exhausted <laughs> when we got done. <laughs> this, is, this is great. This gives us a chance to breathe. Yes, yeah. And we'll probably, um, our next one, we'll probably point to this one and just say, hey, if you want to, f- to hear the relaxed version yeah. of Flip and Danny talking about this, yeah. go over here. The relaxed version. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> in a very relaxing way, yes. I'm going to talk about what is generational wealth. That's right. <laughs> so building genera- generational wealth is really um, your assets mm-hmm. and your intangibles being passed down. Um, so what are assets? Assets are your property, your investments, mm-hmm. your money. Mm-hmm. That's just three examples. What are some of the intangibles? These are things that people do not think about when they mm-hmm. think about generational wealth and what should be passed down. These are things like financial education. Ding, 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 ding. We're mm-hmm. going to talk about that a lot in this podcast. Yeah. Um, values. What are your values as a human being in general? You want to be mm-hmm. passing that down to your kids. And habits. Mm-hmm. Your daily habits literally make up who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, And some of those habits are so incredibly impactful Mm -hmm. um, in the results that are created Mm -hmm. because of them. Um, And if your kids can pick up on those things because they see how impactful those things are that you are doing, Mm -hmm. um, 
it, it passes down generation yep. to generation and it's so incredible. Um, so generational wealth is very largely created by keeping more of your money. Mm-hmm. And you and I talk about this all the time. There's two skills. I'm going to test you. What are they? Three. Skills. No, you want three there's ma- there's skills. Ma- making it, making it. Yes. Keeping it and spending it. <laughs> <laughs> the spending this, is Flip's little twist on the two most important money the, skills. It's, it's two point five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's making it and then keeping it. Those are the, those are the two. And That's then, right. And spending, and spending it really, it. quite frankly, is important, right? Yes. We want to enjoy life, and you and I have always said that too. That you know, if we're going to do something, we're going to do it upgrade, and that's why we started doing everything that we're doing here mm-hmm. because we wanted to do an upgrade. We wanted mm-hmm. to do all these cool and fun things because we only live life once. Yep. Um, but we didn't want to do it and 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 be broke. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't. We wanted to use some wisdom and yes. how we created it. So I'll I'll, I'll give you that third one mm-hmm. <laughs> as long as you're using wisdom in the making it and keeping it. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so uh, why is generational uh, wealth important? Flip? Well, a, number one, it gives you. Uh, you know, you you when, gosh, you know. You want to see what you want to be there, and, and like when you're 70 or 80 years old, and just know that when you look at your family, you know, your kids and your kids' kids, and you know that they're going to be taken care of. Yeah, they're not going to be, you know, uh, uh, begging for money, they're not going to be, uh, you know, trying to uh, make it at the end of the month. Uh, you know, what's the, what's the country song? Too much month at the end of the money. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, if they they, they want to make sure that everyone's taken care of, yeah. and that just gives it's peace of mind, um, and it just gives it, it gives you more freedom. Yeah. You know, and more a, options, choices, mm-hmm. right? Especially yep. for your kids. And I think that we talked about this a little bit um, on our other podcast. Uh, was we hear stories all the time of. Let's just say we're parents. We've got mm-hmm. three beautiful dogs that we're passing everything down to. That are spoiled <laughs> beyond belief. <laughs> um, uh, you and I work really, really, really hard. And mm-hmm. we have for years. We are getting into what we're calling the anchor leg of our That's journey. Right. That's where right. Where we're trying to really kind of button things up. Mm-hmm. And just... That's my favorite line. Just button things button up. Things up yeah. mm-hmm. And just have fun. But in that, had we not... If we had kids, had we not given them some education... Those two skills we talked about, mm-hmm. I'm not mentioning the third, the making it, we did that. I would have taught them the third easily. <laughs> the keeping it, we would have done that. Mm-hmm. But the second that you'd go to that second part of passing it down mm-hmm. after we leave this earth, um, they have to know those two skills. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what happens? And we hear yeah. this story all the time. It's gone. Mm-hmm. You know, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions, mm-hmm. just gone. Well, I mean, Be- look at how many millionaires uh, or how many uh, lotto winners. You know? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, or even... Uh, That's a great example. Uh, even uh, pro athletes. There's pro athletes that make millions of dollars. Yeah. And, you know, you find out like four years after they're done playing that they're homeless. hmm You know? And and it's just, it's... They they knew, they knew learned how to make it. Yeah. They just didn't learn the second one. Yes. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, so that's really what, why we're kind of... We're very, very passionate about passive income, number one, because mm-hmm. uh, even when you pass down passive income, it's hard to really kind of screw that up. Unless yep. you just sell all of your assets, mm-hmm. passive income is meant to be coming in every single month, right? right. Um, so it's one of the mitigating factors mm-hmm. to help the, the future generations not screw up too you know, badly. Yeah. Um, and that's why we love and real estate. setting it up so that way, no matter what they do, there's still something coming in next <laughs> yeah, month. Exactly. Yeah. Because eventually they'll learn. Uh-huh. But, and most importantly, when they spend all the money, they're like, crap. Yep. You know, did, did they learn how to make it? Because uh-huh. <laughs> they sure as heck didn't learn how to keep it. Yep. Okay, so um, so how? Uh, how 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 do you go about t- teaching or changing the game for generational wealth? We came up with two key factors. Um, the first one being invest in your kids' financial education. Yes. Which is what we've been talking about. Yep. This whole thing mm-hmm. and all the mistakes. Um, so that's number one. Number one is what we're going to talk about first, and it's going to have four key components. Mm-hmm. The first one is having open conversations about money. Yes. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll wait. There's so much I want to say. Um, the second one is needs versus wants. Mm-hmm. The third one is earnings and savings. The fourth one is investing and giving back. Mm-hmm. So that's part one of what we feel is one of the most powerful, powerful things to think about when you're considering generational wealth and how to change the game mm-hmm. for you and your future family. I, I think actually before number one, we'll call it A. Yeah. A1 yeah. is teaching everyone in your family that talking about money isn't taboo. I was going to say that. Ah, and I said I was going to wait. 
<laughs> that I is mean, that is part about investing in the kids' financial education because uh-huh. you need them to know it's okay to talk about money, right? Yeah. That's the like we created the. That's why what um, when we created the free Facebook groups where mm-hmm. we're talking about all of this stuff. One of the things I said in the in the post was now I know. Most of you guys don't want to talk about money, and it's a taboo topic. Don't mm-hmm. talk about money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Maybe that's where I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, this is the place where you're going to talk about money mm-hmm. because we're talking about it all the time. And the reason we're talking about it is because we all need to get educated. No way to pass down generational wealth if you're not educated first and you can't teach your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, thank you for bringing that up because I was so – I wanted to and I was holding back. I stole it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, part two of the how, in uh, our opinion. Yes, so, is preparing to pass it down. Yes. And so this is more than just, hey, we've got a bank account. Um, here you go. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, and so we're talking about life insurance. Yes. Wills and trusts. Yes. Can you, show, show? Uh, you, you can. You so can give them a sneak preview. This is, so we did a will back in about 20 years ago. Yeah. It's about 20 years ago. Um, and that was before we... You know, got into real estate before we formed six companies and have a 15,000 square foot office and 40 team members. Mm -hmm. Uh, So now we have a little bit more than a will. There's words in here that I don't even know (laughs) um, what what they are. Uh, In fact, uh, and this is no joke, um, the very first thing I wrote, because I said to Danny, I said, what is this? And she says, I don't know, but if you have any questions, write it down. So on the very first page, on the very first line, I wrote, what is this for? Question mark. Because I don't even know. Like there's, 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 there's stuff in here. There's, oh, uh, living wheel. I know what that one is. Um, that one just says my name. Uh, so, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, so there's a lot of paperwork here. There's a lot of legal. I read through these and I took a four hour nap. <laughs> it was, that, was, that was brutal. Yeah, and we literally just read through these like just a couple weeks ago because uh-huh. we, we got these right before Christmas. Uh, we ended up getting sick. Yeah, um, yeah. And, that. Uh, so we just didn't have time. So right. I, I thought while we were recovering, let's just print all these out. Let's, you know, go through them, write any questions, correct anything that, that is is incorrect Mm -hmm. um and then let's book a call with our attorney afterwards Mm -hmm. um but i still wanted to go through all of this with our ceo and everything right and clarification this did not send me to the hospital that was no that that, that is true (laughs) um but yeah that's why i brought him in here so for those of you who are listening instead of watching on video um uh what flip picked up here was a ream um, of paper yeah it really is (laughs) and it's all these documents that we went through that our attorney um uh sent us because we asked him to update our will and Mm -hmm. to help us with estate planning because we do have a lot so many more assets at this point in time and we wanted to make sure that our team was protected yep. so uh so part two is the how mm-hmm. of ha- passing it down just yes. like flip said so yep. we're going to go back to part one and now we're going to dig into the four pieces that we first told you about and then we're going to hit part two and uh, make sure it's not taboo <laughs> Let me get that in there again. That's right. Okay, so part one was uh, investing in your kid's financial education. Mm-hmm. Um, and that means you too. So if you're listening to this, maybe you're educating yourself um, so that you can invest your kids. That uh, Congratulations, that's step one. Yes. Um, so money conversations. So if you're going to do this with your kids, you want to make it fun. Yeah. Right? Um, because anything that's work... You know, nobody wants to do it. Nobody. Yeah. Wants, I don't want to talk about money, Dad. Uh, don't teach me about. No, oh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> um, so what I love is we gave this to uh, um, the nephews and nieces on my side. I don't. I can't remember if we gave it to your nephews so. and nieces. No, so. um, but it's a rich dad poor dad game, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's called Cash Flow for Kids. Right. Um, and so we gave them that game because if it were us, we'd be like some making you know some fun ways for us to talk about money mm-hmm. and learn about how to create wealth Mm -hmm. in the very first place so we bought this for them so that's just one of our ideas since we don't have kids we don't have applicable conversations to be able to share with you here we're (laughs) just telling you really don't talk back to us (laughs) they they do but no yeah yeah. um so and then uh you know giving them rich dad poor dad stuff i mean when i looked up um financial education for kids there's just so much out there in fact i remember sending my sister one um youtube video and i can't remember this kid's name it might have been like caleb something but um to, to t- type in you know financial education for kids or, or something like that it's this like teenager who mm. their parents taught him and he's incredibly incredibly smart and he's found a way to create a youtube 
um, channel that's all about teaching other teenagers and kids about financial education. He's wow. got a coaching program. It's like, it, I was just blown away. And I was like, more people need to see that. I sent it right away to my sister. Um, uh, so that, that's the way that you make it fun, is yeah. you find ways where um, money conversations become normal. Mm -hmm. It becomes something that the kid is actually going, Dan, I just saw Kale out on YouTube or whatever his name is. <laughs> right. um, and he was talking about this. And maybe suddenly your kids start teaching you, right? right. Because you and I don't know anything about money. I not, don't know sorry, anything. not yeah. anything. I, 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 we don't know everything is what I meant to say. <laughs> how to spend. <laughs> how, to, how to spend. I am a master, grand master. <laughs> but I imagine if we had kids and we were doing all this stuff, mm -hmm. the kids would get really motivated and excited about what they could do with money. Mm -hmm. um, and they would start going, Mom, Dad, Dad, don't buy that car. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So anyways, um, and just start that process as early as you can. Um, but we've got friends that uh, have bought properties in yeah. their name. Do you want to talk so, about it's this? It's so cool. Well, actually, there was uh, one couple. They've got uh, uh, thousands of doors, um, and they've put some of those units in their kids' names. Mm -hmm. So these kids are like, I don't know, five, you know, and they've got more units than I do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, and they, you know, obviously don't understand it and don't know about it you sure. know but yeah. it's for the future yep you know uh and then there was the uh the gentleman uh just had a baby girl right yes like a couple, uh, -huh. Days ago. Uh, -huh. uh and he said uh that uh i'm gonna buy 60 uh, doors this 60 year for her or something for her. like yeah yeah, yeah. so it's, i mean she's gonna have 60 units before she's one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a little bit sooner than what i did so <laughs> you know yeah uh, i remember there was a uh, <clears throat> video i think you and i were uh, with steven we were just we were chatting with him um, and he had his girl with him and I think she was maybe three years old and he said something like, yeah, she's, she invested in the storage units that we just yeah. bought. And I was like, yeah. that is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, um, oh, wow, why did I just, I just missed his name uh, from Utah. Uh, uh, rehab. Tyler. Tyler Jensen. Yes. Uh, he went to the closing table with his son. Yes. His son, son signing all the documents. Yeah. How cool is that? I know. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. and I think his son's like 12, 13 inch. Oh I have no gosh. idea, really, but that's what he looks like when I look at him and I saw the picture. Yeah, because um, we're kid professionals. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we are so not. Yeah, yeah. Um, looks like he's 12. I love uh, that they do that. And Tyler, speaking of Tyler, he actually takes his, you know, kids. He's done some videos oh, yeah. of his kids at rehabs. Doing rehabs, right? yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. helping out. They're helping with trash outs. They actually brought their friends to rehabs and helped with trash outs and things like that. Um, that's the type of education. child labor. <laughs> We're not going there. <laughs> no, 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 we no, said you, it was fun. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You're, Everybody's no, you're having exactly fun right. and learning. But that's that was the key, right, mm -hmm. is, is making it fun. Yeah. Because I'm sure those kids are just super excited to be mm -hmm. learning, you know, all of that stuff. Um, so that, that, that's the part one of the overarching number one of our mm -hmm. how is invest in your kids' financial education. The part one that we wanted to, to really hit home was to make it fun. Yep. Uh, and then needs versus wants. Now, yep. it's very funny that I get this one. Um, <laughs> we but, did that on purpose. Because uh, yeah, yeah, you've I, got a perfect I, example, don't you? Yeah, I, I actually I do. Uh, <laughs> and it's funny because I always talk about how much I like to spend. It's like the, even here in the office. Uh, uh, we need to buy something. Tell Flip he'll buy it. <laughs> I believe that. I don't even. Get, how did How did that happen? Because <laughs> I'll come to me and I'm like, "Do we need it? Yeah, uh, we really need it." <laughs> ask, go, tell Flip to buy it. <laughs> and luckily, Aaron's even better at it than me because <laughs> I'll say yes sometimes. When he'll he'll be like, "Hmm, I don't know if we need that." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but needs versus want. So talk about the depreciation of things, you know. And when you talk about depreciation of things, uh, especially guys, we talk about cars. You know, you go to a, a brand new car lot, you buy a brand new car, the second you drive it off the lot, boom, that thing's depreciating, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and not a little amount. Right. You know, uh, you know, we talked about this on the other, the, the other one, uh, uh, needs versus want. Um, I didn't uh, need a sports car, but I wanted one. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, and, uh, well, the, just the, the day that we happened to go out and, Random day. It's a true story. Random day. We happen to find a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. End up picking one out. Uh, but this car was two years old. Mm -hmm. It had 7,000 miles on it. And I got it for almost 50% of the price that it was bought two years prior. Mm -hmm. And then that's considerable when the person bought it two years ago for $96,000. I mean, that, that's a steal. Yes. And, Thank you. And it was still a, it's still a brand new car today. Right. I mean, it's still, it looks gorgeous. Anyway, uh, but that's... Buy the used cars. Well, actually, it's 2022. If you've done any research, even used cars are actually more than new cars today. It's yeah, crazy. It's, yeah. Let's get off the car topic. 
Um, and so, uh, but we talk about, uh, uh, you know, in saving money, what could they do with that money that they saved? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, instead of buying the new car, they buy the used car. You know, now they saved a, a chunk of change, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, $500 or $10,000 or whatever. But now what do they do with that? Um, you know, talk talk about that because, you know, me, I'll spend it. Mm-hmm. I'll look what I saved. I'm going to spend it over here. Um, <laughs> uh, and in peer pressure, especially with kids, you know, I, I can't even imagine growing up with the social media like oh, today. yeah, me neither. Oh, my gosh. No, thank I'm just you. glad picture phones weren't around when I was a grown up. <laughs> That's all I say. Um, but, uh, uh, but the peer pressure, you know, with, uh, hey, no, let's go out and do this. Let's go out and, go out and do this. And, you know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save my money or, or – you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to do that. You yeah. Know, or Having some financial literacy. Yeah. When your friends don't. Yeah. That's and, just... and how that could impact, you know, both ways, right? Yep. If you're not strong in your financial literacy, um, then you can be persuaded mm-hmm. to be like, oh, I got to have the new car. I got to be the cool kid. Oh yeah. You keep know? up with the Joneses. Yeah, exactly. Oosh. Yeah. I got to spend this money or I got to yep. go out and party or, you know, uh, but if you've got that strong foundational component mm-hmm. in the financial literacy behind you then yep. you're teaching them, mm-hmm. right? Um, because I, I'm going to let you talk about it. We talk, uh, we, I always think in the future, right? I envision, right. you know, um, what what's it like when I go to my reunion? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and actually, I actually, I actually went to my high school reunion. I did not. Uh, I don't even think you know where your high school is. Um, but, uh, you know, I did. And, and uh, I went to a very small school yeah. in the middle of nowhere, uh, you know. Uh, and so, you know, there was maybe 30 people there, mm-hmm. maybe 40, if that. And that's 30, that 30 people. I mean, that's people. Wow, that's not a lot. Well, that's a third of my class. Right. I mean, it wasn't a very good class to begin with. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I had a great time. And But you could see the people that, that knew what they were doing. Mm-hmm. You could see the people that didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it was very, uh, it was eye-opening. You know, yes. you had written this down. And I'm like, ah, I was just there a couple years ago. You know? Right. So it's, it's uh, and you can see it. I mean, you see the Social Security Administration stat coming mm-hmm. true, right? Yep, yep. That 92% and, are still struggling. Right. And a couple years ago, that was my fifth year class reunion, you know, because uh, I'm, I'm just a young chicken. Yeah? Okay. Really? Okay. Mm, no. Fibber. Yeah, I don't even know what your re- <laughs> reunion it was. <laughs> no, more than 10. I right? will just say north of 10. That's all I'll say. Yeah. So uh, so to recap, so um, when we're talking about the how, we're talking about investing in the kids' financial education, right? Mm-hmm. And the first thing that we talked about was make it fun. Yep. You know, play some games. Enjoy yep. it. Number two, flip just touch on needs versus wants. And yes. really giving them that strong foundation mm-hmm. um, so they understand that. Um, number three is talking about earning. Um, so one of the things that I think about when we talk about earning is like creating a business together. Yep. Like I keep on hearing about kids doing this, that, and whatever. And I think on the other episode, we talked about Shark Tank and the fact uh-huh. how many times have we seen kids that are like eight years old or 12 uh-huh. years old when they, and they remember the kid with the, the, kid the bow tie. tie? <laughs> That's about him. hilarious. He, he is, man. He knocked it out of the, <laughs> he did. Oh, man. Um, but we love that show. We love business in general. Yep. So we watch things like that. Um, but it, that was an opportunity for the kid. And, and many times, um, and I I don't know if that I would just say 50 50 the kid comes on and they're like I'm the sole owner mm-hmm. like the parent is there to support them they've allowed the kid to own everything 100% mm-hmm. and then some of them are I'm the one that created the idea but I've got to go to school mm-hmm. and I've got to learn so mm-hmm. my mom or my dad is helping implement and they're running the business um, so they create some type of partnership with their parents I just think that's just one of the very cool um, ideas on how to pass entrepreneurship down mm-hmm. um, to kids because I believe was it you uh, on our last podcast that talked about a YouTube channel that some kid oh I know I talked about it last night I, I was reading an article and, and uh, uh, these two parents they decided to create a video okay uh, of, of their child that was three years old oh that's down, what it was down a toy yeah, yeah, yeah. Down a toy aisle mm-hmm. um, and uh, uh, and I can't remember what the kid's name is but now uh, that was when he was three and the kid chose a toy or whatever and so they created these videos and and they were just having fun creating these videos and then one of them went viral and now they've got uh they've got cartoons they've got uh just uh, uh, just an amazing amount of things the kid's making 25 million dollars a year he's 10 years old that's unbelievable their parents quit their jobs though <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 proud, proud parents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are the ones that started it. Just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I, I had a lemonade stand. I don't, I've never told you this. When uh, gosh, I was probably ten, uh, and I think that was the very first time in my life that I learned the lesson: location, location, location. <laughs> yes. I think I sold one cup, which I 
I, I it was probably a nickel back then. Yeah. You know, and that nickel was spent before I made it back in the house because mm-hmm. I'm good at spending. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So I, I was going to mention eliminate it. Like it doesn't have to be a big, huge business. Right. It, you know, it's teaching them what is a business mm-hmm. and how do you create it and how do you make money mm-hmm. out of thin air, right? Mm-hmm. You know, mom and dad, will you guys go uh, purchase some lemonade for me? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I, I'd like to sell it. And then right. how much did it cost? How much are you going to sell it for? And what's, yep. you know, the margin in between that you're yep. going to make for net profit. And if you're going to hire your brother or sister to help you, how much are you going to pay them? Are mm-hmm. you still going to make money? There's such simple con- concepts that can be taught at such a young age for them to just, you know, marinate on and grow. Yep. And, um, it's super, super exciting. Yeah. I think I, I was like, uh, this was a lot of work. Um, <laughs> and so I went back inside and played video games. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Flip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so some of the other things that you want to uh, be teaching your kids um, when it comes to earning is to pay yourself first. <clears throat> this is a concept that um, I would say, I'm not going to give a stat. I have no idea what the stat is, but most adults don't even know how to do it. Right. They don't know that this is what you should be doing, but you should be taking 15 to 20% of what you earn to pay yourself. Mm-hmm. And that could be putting it in a bucket for taxes. It could mm-hmm. be putting it in a bucket for your savings. It could be um, another bucket for giving back or investing. Um, but the first money should come to you. Mm-hmm. Once that money has come to you, now you're going to pay any expenses that you have. Right. Any bills. Once you've paid all the bills... You're going to look and see if there's any money left Mm -hmm. because really that's the money that you want to spend and to be living on, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And if there's no money left, there's a lesson to be taught there. (laughs) All right, son, you need to learn how to earn more money so you've got more money down here because Mm -hmm. when you paid yourself first, that was for the savings that you wanted to go to Disney World, remember? That was for these investments that you wanted to use to you know, grow your income. Mm-hmm. Um, that was for taxes that you're gonna eventually have to pay. Um, that was for you know whatever those buckets were mm-hmm. uh, for. So um, that wasn't the money to really live on or have fun, I guess it, it, I, I should be saying. Um, that's down here, that's a third piece. Mm-hmm. So pay yourself, then pay all of your bills, and then you should have some fun money left. And if mm-hmm. you don't, you gotta teach your kid how to make more money or how to decrease their expenses. Mm. Um, and not just teach your kid, t- teach yourself. Right. Because we should all be doing this. This yep. is exactly how you um, grow something the right way. Mm-hmm. And if you love real estate investing, one of the ways, things that you can do is read the book Profit First for mm-hmm. Real Estate Investing. Yes. It's by David Richter. We yes, just uh, yes, interviewed yes. him yep. um, for our Freedom 360 podcast, which is launching soon. Um, and he went through all of this. Yes. And it's such a great concept to learn um, as an adult, mm-hmm. even more important for your kids to learn at a young yeah. age so they don't screw it up. Because yep. we talked about on that podcast that we screwed it up. I, mm. We did not start the right way. <laughs> <laughs> but we eventually okay. learned, you know, the concepts there. of profit first and how we should be doing it. Right. So I think that that's super, super powerful. So part four yes. of this how mm-hmm. is investing. That's right. Yeah. T- tell them what you're doing here. I mean, yeah, that's right. You're, you're, you're um, obviously you're listening to a real estate investing podcast. Yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to us right now. Yes, because that's uh, all we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, uh, but uh, you know, uh, bring them in. This isn't uh, this isn't for adults only. Mm-hmm. This isn't rated R. Yeah, that's uh, right. Well, well, sometimes I can be. Um, <laughs> I've accidentally <laughs> cussed a couple times. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's for the most part it's PG. Um, G, G sometimes. Um, uh, but bring them in. You know, bring them along. You know, teach them. You know, uh, uh, you, whatever groups you join. Take them along, you know, mm-hmm. even though it's real estate investing groups, uh, you know what, at the, at the hotel and uh, once a month or whatever, uh, we used to go to the one in Phoenix, Azria, mm-hmm. uh, you know, bring them along. There's no age, you know, criteria. Yeah. You know, you no, know, there aren't a lot of kids there. Who that cares? Does, that doesn't mean that you can't bring yours, you know. Uh, so do it with them. Read read more books about it, you know. Get them involved with it. Uh, listen to audio books together, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But but just do do things together. Uh, and then uh, giving back. This is something that's so huge. No one talks about this either, mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. You know, to give back. Well, well I'm trying to save. Right. But why, why would I mm-hmm. why, why, I'd give back? This is mine. Yeah. You know, uh, get rid of that mentality. Um, you know, uh, we always talk about the oxygen mask. It, you know, when you, when you get on the flight, you know, they go through all the safety protocol and, mm-hmm. and they say that the uh, uh, if air pressure, whatever, blah, 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 oxygen mask going to drop. And th- that's what they always say. Make sure to put yours on first mm-hmm. before helping others. That's because right. 
if you don't put yours on first, you can't help other people if you're not breathing oxygen. Yeah. So you need to breathe first. So yeah. put yours on first. Uh, and also the bag will have oxygen flowing, but it won't inflate. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Very key. Um, but uh, uh, in, in one of the notes here, the, the more you make, the more you give. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, I think that's the, what people, they don't understand that concept. Mm -hmm. They're thinking, um, I want to help these people. I want to help these people. But they're not creating, you know, enough money themselves that they could be helping 10,000 people instead of one person mm -hmm. if they would put on their oxygen mask yep. first. and. Yep. The more that you make, the more you can give. We're creating a foundation now, mm -hmm. right? We couldn't have created a foundation back 10 years ago, nope. right? That's right. But we concentrated and focused on putting our oxygen mm -hmm. mask on, building it, helping the team grow. Yep. And then we're here. And then how much bigger do we get? And mm -hmm. how, how where's Aaron going to take this company? Oh, I know. Um, you know that's exciting. Yeah, it's, it's super, super exciting. Um, so, okay. So that's the, the first of the house. Investing in financial education. I was going to say something to you. Uh, there was somebody in our mastermind, um, and I remember him bringing his teenager uh, to the mm -hmm. event, so to the mastermind event. Yep. And uh, they, they were always saying, hey, we're listening to the modules. We're going through all this stuff. And I just it was another just perfect example of bringing your kids along for the yeah. ride. And she was so excited to be learning. Um, and I swear she was smarter than probably half the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so when we talked about the how, we talked about, number one, investing in your kid's education. That was number one. Everything that we've talked about until now had to do with that. There was four parts that we, that we dug into. The second one is now you have to pass it down. Mm -hmm. And you have to pass it down and, and preserve the wealth that you've created to be able to pass down to them and as much of it as possible. Mm -hmm. So that is part two. This is where you're going to get with an attorney mm -hmm. um, and start talking to them. But before we get to the attorney part, <laughs> we're going to talk about life insurance. Um, uh, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, if you ask me, is it, well, you understand life insurance. I said, yeah, you make payments until somebody dies and then the other person gets the money. That's right. Life insurance 101. There you go. So the second part of passing it down <laughs> is going to be life insurance, wills, trust, just mm -hmm. estate planning in general. So right. we're going to start with life insurance. I used to work at New York Life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know a lot about life insurance. And I said, hey, you can talk about this topic if you want. We can go back and forth. And that's when he joked. And he was like, I don't know nothing. I make the payments. And I know that when I die, there's going to be money going out there. Everybody. Yeah, that's right. Um, so there's two different types of life insurance. There's whole mm -hmm. life insurance and term life insurance. Many people are familiar with term. It's the easiest to understand. It's uh, You're going to go in and look for a five-year policy, a 10-year policy, a 30-year policy, and you're going to have a number of payments to make. And I um, probably bet a majority of people think that that's the only kind yeah, of life insurance. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so you can have that term life insurance. I think that the, these this is a great, like for, for us, it's a great add-on. It's nice to have time, term life insurance for different reasons mm -hmm. um, that are in additional to other policies um, right. because we have multiple policies and we're going to get into that. But the other type is whole life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and you can Google this. I, I really recommend you talk to um, a professional mm -hmm. that understands both because you are going to get educated in a way that... Your, your mind is going to be blown. Mm -hmm. And everybody who gets educated about what we call becoming your own bank, mm -hmm. which is a cash value whole life insurance policy, right. everybody who gets educated about it gets it. Mm -hmm. Every single person. So don't read the stuff. I just Googled it real quick before I got in here. I was just like, oh my gosh, crap, 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 because I know it mm -hmm. and I do it. And the people <clears throat> in our masterminds, they do it. Mm -hmm. There's actually a guy, Tom, and he comes mm -hmm. to all of our masterminds because he's like, preaching from the rooftops like guys yeah, come on like this is a serious wealth strategy and, and and if you don't have it already it's because you don't understand it that's yep. all yep. um so get with somebody that understands it and if you need a referral we can give you a referral yes um and we don't sell it we don't get paid for this nope. we're just telling you it's a really really good thing to learn and get educated yeah, on not and to get yes yeah. <laughs> um and it's especially awesome what i did when i was at new york life was i talked to people about doing it for their kids mm -hmm. because if you can do it for your kids it's going to guarantee their future insurability which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big deal for you too, right? Uh, because if anything changes in your life, suddenly term life insurance, they'll probably turn you down. They mm -hmm. might even cancel your policy if you already have a policy. Um, uh, but if you if you insure yourselves at a young age, and the younger the better, and in good health, then as long as you keep paying on the policy, you've got it forever. Mm -hmm. So when you do it for kids, like they're their insurability is guaranteed even if they have later problems that, that develop um, and their premiums are like, they're cheap. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and whole life insurance, kind of the cons um, is cost. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, so that's why, yeah, the younger that you do it, the better it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And then the more it builds because what happens with whole life insurance policy is the permanent life insurance policy. It's not something that says 10 years, Mm -hmm. 20 years or 30 years, which is term life insurance. It is something that is permanent as long as you keep paying. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's key. You have to keep paying <laughs> on keep it. To, yes, to be able to, you know, keep the insurance. But it's forever. Mm-hmm. And it never changes. They can't cancel it on you as long as you keep, keep it paying. And you've got those, you know, early on premiums when you're healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, so inside of it builds cash value. This cash value that builds inside of it, you can borrow against it. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the, the cash value is built um, uh, tax-free. Mm-hmm. And even if you borrow against it, let's just say we pull out $100,000 of our cash value life insurance. It keeps on compounding as if we didn't pull it out. Mm-hmm. It's just there, 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 there. Now, if we didn't pay it back, once the benefit went on to whoever was the beneficiary, that hundred thousand dollars would be deducted because we did have a loan on it. Right. But this enables, you know, especially kids. If you set it up for them, they can use it for school. They can mm-hmm. use it for their first car. You want them to pay it back. But mm-hmm. this is just, you know, something that you've created that you started from a very, very young age. Lots of tax benefits. Some of the insurance companies like New York Life will also pay dividends. So if they're making a profit, they're spreading it amongst policyholders. Poly mm-hmm. So that was something why I loved and I chose New York Life. Again, not an affiliate. I don't work yeah, there anymore. Right, right. <laughs> and I don't sell this stuff. But I'm saying what I, I only do what I believe in. Mm-hmm. And I believed in whole life insurance. I believed in New York Life as a company. Um, now, some of the people that we work with they don't like New York Life as much and they explained to me why I was like oh that's interesting okay so to talk to somebody who's educated and who's in the space right now so that you can learn um, but become your own bank you can google that and you're, you might see some stuff but again if you need a referral you can um, yeah yeah talk to us mm-hmm. yeah the company you keep uh, that yeah that's New York, New York yep. Life yeah yep. Um, so the next thing is uh, disability insurance. Yes, uh, disability insurance uh, or disability plans. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is just uh, in case anything happens. Yes. You know, uh, gosh, car accidents, mm-hmm. uh, random accidents. Yeah. You know, uh, walk into a door. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, gosh, gosh, who knows what you're going to do? Oh my goodness! Uh, uh, chairs and <laughs> desks. Oh my. Um, uh, so, but it's just protecting yourself and protecting others. Yes. Uh, uh, just making in case anything happens. Yeah. And that's something I didn't dive into in the life insurance, but it's perfect for disability too mm-hmm. and why we did it. Um, it's not just for kids. It's not just for adults. It's it's for your business too, Yeah. right? Yep. If something happened to you and I, this is why um, it was private money lender conversations that uh-huh. forced us to jump sooner on to all this type of stuff. Because right. I said, what happens if, if you flip get hit by the bus, Danny? I was like, great dang question. Well, I don't know. I, I avoid buses. <laughs> So it got us thinking about stuff that we were pushing off. Uh And suddenly we put in life insurance policies that covered all of the business debt, Mm -hmm. all of our private lenders. So if something did happen to us, everything got paid off. Everybody was okay. And then somebody else popped in the question, well, Danny, what if you get hit by the bus, but you don't die? You're just disabled and you can't run your business anymore. I was like... Eek. Mm, good question. <laughs> and so, but it was people asking me good, hard questions yeah. that they should be asking me. Yeah. And it, it prompted us to put in place disability mm-hmm. um, uh, measures of mm-hmm. what happens if it's me, uh, what happens if it's you, what happens if it's both of us. And we've got all this stuff laid out. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I had to jump in there because no, I, no, I forgot no, to talk not, about the business no, part was, of it. No, that's great. That's great. And, and, uh, and which led us all into the estate planning and led us into... This. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, and making sure that everything, like everything down to our pool table in the basement, you know. It's uh, going to who we uh, want it to go to. Yeah. And, and I can't remember I, who it's I going to. I can't remember either. Um, <laughs> hopefully somebody close. Um, but, uh, uh, but, you know, and, you know, which is preserving the maximum amount of wealth possible, uh, you know, and, and making sure everything's taken care of. That's right. That's without this, woo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. What a nightmare for everybody left behind. So yeah. this is something, how much do you care about your family? <laughs> yeah. How much do you care about your business and your team? Because if you really truly love them, like you say they, that you do, mm-hmm. you should be setting all of this stuff up in place yep. so that because we're not promised tomorrow. It's one of the things I put at the very end of this mm-hmm. to, to you know, talk about, really bring it home. Um, you know, uh, we could, I don't know who it was. They, somebody just said they died in their sleep. It was young. Bob, Bob Saget. Oh, Bob Saget. Yeah. yeah. Um, he just died. Well, he's 65. His... Not really young. Yeah, yeah, still, yeah, that's true. Yeah, still um, younger than they, anyone had yeah. expected. Um, but but he was, he'd just done a comedy show, I think, the night, the night prior before. or something. Yeah. He was in good health. They found no drugs, nothing mm-hmm. like that. It didn't look like there was any foul play. Mm-hmm. Um, but you are not promised tomorrow. It can nope. be just as simple as dying in your sleep. And yep. somebody else um, said they got, they, they could, their son came home sick um, from college. 
um, said they were going to take a nap, died in a sleep. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, you're just not promised. Yeah. So how much do you love and care for those around you? Mm-hmm. Act right this freaking second, jump right. on the phone with an attorney or a life insurance person or whatever, mm-hmm. and put your, you know, ducks in a row yep. it, is the point. Yep. And that's what we're talking about here. So, it's, so succession plans, that's one of the things that we did. So as these questions and as we started building these six companies, these are the things that we were confronted with. Mm-hmm. And we're like, hey, if we really care about our team, I saw it. Tiffany, I love her. Every quarterly planning meeting, I would talk about the fact that we have life insurance. Oh, and if we die, hated. she oh, hates man. every. She's we like, you stop <laughs> talking about dying. And I was like, hey, I care about you guys. And I want to make sure that you're okay. <laughs> so here's the things that we put in place. So in, even in our operating agreements, if we mm-hmm. die, there is a succession plan that the people here, are still taken care of. Not only is debt paid off and private lenders are paid off, but there's people put in place that they now own and run the company Mm -hmm. so that everybody keeps on going. Nobody has to worry and that's because we love and care about the people that are around us. Um, Is this when we tell them that our dogs actually will own the company? (laughs) Spartacus. Spartacus Spartacus is going to run the company. (laughs) Don't let Rosie have it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. And Bailey will just give all the money away. He'll give everything away. Um, So the other thing you want to think about is wills and trusts. Yes. Um, And and have one or the other we have both now um, we only had a will but right now as we've talked about these papers here in front of us um, we are working on estate planning at a mm-hmm. further level because yep. our last will was 20 years ago and we had not built everything that we had mm-hmm. today so we wanted to update it all um, our operating agreements have our succession plan we have our life insurance policies for each other personally mm-hmm. and our for our families personally we have life insurance policies for the business yep. we put all that stuff in place but the last step was really taking our outdated will making sure it was updated so everything mm-hmm. you know on that side of things was uh, handled so um, a will is very inexpensive. It's just something for you to um, uh, essentially tell people what you want to happen after you die. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is what I. This Who is what my, my yeah, stuff. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, but it's very likely you're going to have to go through probate if you just have a will. But it's at least a very first step. If you're going to do any step at all, take that very first step. Mm-hmm. It's not hard. You can even download stuff. I think off yeah, on the it, internet. Yeah, it's, it's got to be something. Yeah, free and I think it's free. You can probably download it. You can probably just fill it out and you just you have it somewhere. You tell mm-hmm. your family where it's at. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's one step. Then a, a trust. This is what we're working on right now. That's why we pulled all this stuff out. Um, and a revocable. Lit- Living trust does avoid probate, and I do think that that's important. And so that was something that was important to us. That that is the trust has a, a trustee. They are the ones in charge of doing all of this. And ours, we are paying the trustee to do all of this. We're not mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, friend." Hey, family member, yeah. we're going to put a lot of work on your plate oh and make gosh. you do all of this stuff. I'd be dead and my family would want to kill me again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're actually putting it in place where, you know, a third party actually takes care of everything and distributes everything according to our wishes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all laid out, absolutely everything. Um, we, we already had our <clears throat> uh, COO, Tina, take a look at everything before docs were created. Uh, we're going to have Aaron take a look at it next so that everybody's kind of on, on the same mm-hmm. page. But it's just something that's important and it very much is a key piece to generate generational wealth. If you want to pass things down and you want to do it wisely and you want to preserve the most amount of wealth possible and take care of everybody after you are gone, this is the way to do it. So there's two parts. Invest in financial education. Two, know how to pass it down and pass it down well. Mm-hmm. Now, what we did not do is disclaimer. So now, why is the disclaimer you, at the end? The disclaimer for this one should have been... Give that real quick. That should have been at the beginning. We are not attorneys. Thank you. We are not uh, uh, CPAs, a, CPAs. We are not financial <laughs> advisors. We are not vegetarians. <laughs> Please consult your own attorney, <laughs> and CPA, your own CPA, and financial planner. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, this is uh, this is all just flipping Danny talk. This yes. is not anything to be taken. I know there's a disclaimer that uh, plays at the end of this video. Uh, but again, make sure this is this is just us just telling it how it is. Yeah. But make sure you consult your own attorney and your own CPA, your own financial planner, your own vegetarians, uh, <laughs> if need be. Um, but, you know, and, and don't just talk to one. Yeah. I mean, when, when you started doing this, you had like four or five, you know, you had emails coming in left and right from yeah. attorneys. And I'm like, yikes, stripes, where we going? <laughs> um, uh, because you're going to hear uh, attorneys, uh, you know, put 10 attorneys in a room, you're going to get 10 different answers. Yes. You know, so uh, make sure you talk to more than one. Yeah. Yeah. So our real takeaways here is just act now. You yeah, know, it takes. Don't, don't wait. You don't, like you said, you're not promised tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. And this might have been a fire hose of information if you're new to generational wealth and, you know, how to take the steps to be able to pass it down. Um, but you can take one bite of the elephant right. and do one thing that you thought was the most important thing that we talked about today. Start there. Hey, if you thought this was a lot, this is 45 minutes. 
Go listen to the eight minute podcast where we did the exact, exact same content in eight minutes. No, it was only part one because we literally said there's no way we could do both uh, of these. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we did. We were much more relaxed and yeah. we were able to talk through different things. Yes. And so I think this one will provide a different type of value for a different type of person. Yeah. So. Um, well, we like to keep these short and sweet. Stop. Wait, that's, yeah, that's the other one. Sorry. <laughs> no, we don't like to keep these short and sweet. Uh, but we hope that you enjoyed uh, t- uh, today's podcast. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, something. I mean, we did talk about it on the other one. And obviously, you can you can tell we're very passionate about this. Yeah. Uh, so we really enjoyed doing this one. So we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, but again, uh, make sure you check out our YouTube channel uh, to see all the other podcasts. Holy smoke, we're in the 40s and 50s on these vlogs and podcasts. I know. My and goodness. We have numerous podcasts. So, you yeah. know, jump around and find everything. We've got um, uh, Freedom 360 is launching yep. um, probably 2022 second quarter. Um, Freedom Through Passive Income already started. Yep. Um, and then this one is Real Talk, which is Real Talk for Real, sta- real Estate Investors. Um, so go around, subscribe to all the channels, like, love. That's right. If we're adding value to you, please share it. Um, because that's one of the cool things about social media is that the more the engagement you guys provide um, by subscribing, comments, reviews, yeah. the more more that that me, uh, media channel or platform uh-huh. says, ooh, people like them. Right. And we're going to share this content because we're trying to help as many people as we can. Right. And this and is this is just free. Chitter chatter. And don't forget, buy a house, get a shirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we like to end all these episodes with... Invest smart. Live happy. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions and information on this show are not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss.